Hello, everyone. My name is Nahmana Shirazi. I work for the Lands Cl Council as Climate Justice Program Director and have a small nonprofit called Muslims for Community Action and Support. We go by MCAS. And we work to help immigrants and refugees in any small way that we can, and also to educate and bring awareness about Islam and the contributions of Muslims in the Greater Spokane area. I am recording this message because Muslims worldwide are celebrating the end of the fasting period of Ramadan. It is Eid al-Fitr, either today or tomorrow, uh, and which loosely translated means the feast celebrating the end of the fasting period. Ramadan lasts 29 or 30 days, depending on the sighting of the crescent moon, and this year overlaps with Lent and Passover. The lunar calendar is 10 days shorter than the Gregorian calendar, which is why Ramadan moves 10 days earlier every year. So even though I would have loved to be with all of you, I am away with my family and community members celebrating Eid and unable to come to you in person. So let me take a moment and wish you all a happy Earth Day, happy Easter, happy Passover, and Eid Mubarak. So talking about the importance of water in Islam, I'm sure you have heard water is life before. We as humans are made up of 70% water. As one of the most important elements in nature, water is needed and required for almost all life and everything that we do relies upon this wonderful element. It is something very valuable to life um, that many people around the world are lacking and praying for. And until we stop to think about it for a minute, living in a first world country with water available at every faucet we stop to wash our hands at, it is very easy to take this natural resource for granted and hence not realize just how much water we waste on a daily basis. It is a valuable resource for life and in the ways of Islam, it is considered a great charitable act to give water to another living thing on earth. Such acts are greatly rewarded, um, rewards and penance for deeds. The way that we look at it as a, as a Muslim is that 30% of whatever it is, is given to us in this life. 70% of it waits in the afterlife. So most Muslims will try and do good deeds to accumulate that 70% when they get to the afterlife. So uh, charitable deeds are very highly rewarded and giving water is considered one of the very big rewards. One, a deed that gives a lot of reward. So a living thing can be another human being, an animal or even a plant. These are all Allah's creations. And so the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, once narrated, the best form of charity is to give someone water. And we send water down from the sky in measure and allocate it on earth. And lo, we are also able to withdraw it. This is taken from the Holy Quran, 2318. Basically signifies the essence of how water is delivered on earth and how the Quran, we, and, and as Muslims, we believe that the, each, each rainfall is dedicated or is, is actually designated to a certain area. It's going to go to some place and that water is going to help crops grow and how that crop is going to end up at your table. So it, it talks about how important water is and to how it ends up on our, on our table because that is, the, um, that is the food that is designated for us when we consume it. It's a, it's a big philosophy in a way in today's convenient world when we think about, because we don't think twice about uh, wasting water, for instance, when we run a long bath or use extra water to wash dishes, leave the tap running when we brush our teeth and spend extra time in the shower just because we feel like it, it can be easy to forget about those who are in desperate need for something we all waste too often. At the Lands Council, I work in preserving our uh, Pacific Northwest forests, water and wildlife. It is part of my faith and my everyday work that brings me to care for the environment that I live in. I have worked to remove toxins in the river, which can bioaccumulate in fish and pose a threat to our indigenous populations and, you know, the fish that we eat because it, it, small fish eat big fish and so on and so forth. And we are really higher up in the food chain, so we have to be careful about these things. So um, that lifestyle for the indigenous population, especially, it is a heritage depending on the salmon in our waters. And I have also championed to regulate use of water during the summer months to keep our single source aquifer healthy. 
so MCAS is a small nonprofit and we work to stand in solidarity with the rest of the city on many issues that affect us and our daily living. So as I explained earlier, being a Muslim, we have a special relationship with water. For instance, uh, we uh, to complete our ablutions or ritualistic washing before we stand up to pray, we use water to do that five times a day. We are taught uh, not to waste any water and um, only use as much as needed. And this is something that is very, um, there, there's, there is a penance if you waste water. So all in all, my lifestyle, my relationship with my environment, my relationship with my neighbors, with people around me, everything does depend a lot on how we, how we uh, view our relationship with water, being a Muslim, being a good neighbor, being a, being a, in solidarity with others. So thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you. Um, apologize for not being there to answer questions. Bye-bye.